Today we're getting you on camera and not just on audio, the guys behind Clubhouse. My guests started Clubhouse. <coughs> Joining me are the co-founders, Paul, as well as Rohan. Thank you guys for joining us here all the way from San Francisco. We really appreciate it. And the fact that there's going to be audio and video. Uh, let me get straight down to it. There's no denying that Clubhouse is the new global sensation. You've got Twitter copying you guys with Twitter spaces. You've got Mark Zuckerberg saying Facebook is going to be doing it as well. Um, I'll let which, whichever one of you to decide to take this one. How did you figure out that audio was going to be so, so big? It's like we got back in time and a live radio station of sorts. Boy, you never really know what's going to happen when you, when you build social products. Rohan and I have known each other for 10 years. And we've always wanted to build something together. But when we first decided to in late 2019, the first thing we actually said was, well, obviously we're not going to build a social product because those things are so unpredictable. I mean, we've been doing it for 10 or 15 years. We love it, but, but they're really hard to predict. We just knew that we both loved audio as a medium. We, we each had a long independent interest in audio and we're just really excited about the potential of where you could take it. But you know, you, you never really can predict what's going to happen when you build these things, or or you know where where things will go in the future. So we just try and stay focused on the product and on the community, and uh, you know take it a day at a time. But it's been a lot of fun so far. Rowan, if I could come to you now, I want to ask you one sure. thing, and that is Clubhouse really arrived on the map in the global scene when Elon Musk came, right? And he had a room. And that's how a lot of us actually figured out you can't go back and hear it. Whatever happens, <laughs> happens and stays in that room. How did you get him on Clubhouse? You know, we, we actually didn't do anything special to get Elon special. I mean, you know, uh, every single day, there are all these amazing creators who are creating thousands and thousands of rooms. And it was just one of our creators, um, uh, Arthi and Sriram, who host the Good Time Show. And uh, we were not involved in getting Elon on Clubhouse in any way. Paul, did you know before that he was planning to come? Did you guys have any inkling or just like he logged in and he started and it was an explosion? We were, we were given short term notice just to get the servers ready. But with someone who is as busy and, and well known as Elon, you never really know if it's going to happen or when it's going to happen. So there was all of this excitement and anticipation in the community beforehand. People were forming rooms for hours before getting ready for it and then lining up to try and get into the room when it started. So it, it's something that really speaks to the power of, of live and, and interactive, right? I mean, think about how different it would have been if he was just recording, uh, recording a podcast. It, it would have had a very different feeling, but this idea that you can be in the room and you never know what's going to happen next. That's something that's just so human and, and so exciting and something that's really different. And it's something that we've come to appreciate through building Clubhouse. You know, for the past 14 months, we've been working to build the plane while we fly it. And there are just a lot of things like that about the nature of audio and live audio and live group audio that you don't fully appreciate until you immerse yourself in the product every day. Oh, absolutely. And what about Mark Zuckerberg, Rohan? How did that one happen? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was also one of the same things where we just wanted to bring him on the platform and host a conversation. And, uh, uh, you know, I really, really enjoyed that conversation. We've also had uh, a lot of excitement around Dr. Fauci and Nicki Minaj. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's something really exciting about uh, famous people just showing up and uh, hanging out with people on the platform. And, all of this has been happening organically. I was gonna, it's, um, it's really interesting. We've never built the product for these large scale use cases and, and, and for big celebrities. From the earliest days, our goal has, to build, has been to build a product for everyone in the world. And there are so many people out there who don't have a following offline, but they're smart and funny and have domain expertise. And, and they're just great at bringing people together. Like if you think about it, audio it's relatively new in the world of social networking but it is the oldest medium we've been gathering with other people in small groups and talking with our voices since the beginning of civilization i think you could argue it's the foundation of civilization it's how we build trust and pass along stories and develop relationships and friendships and share ideas it's something that's so inherently human and we've always felt that the best communication products in the world they take something that we've always enjoyed doing as humans and they make it easier for us to do it instantly with anyone in the world. And so it's been so exciting to see Clubhouse become this 
global service where people from all different countries, all different regions are talking with each other and talking with people on the other side of the world, getting to know their, their people and their culture and, and, and sharing their stories. It's, it's something that we, we had always hoped would happen, but, but it's, been, it's been so exciting to see some of that actually come to fruition as, as, we, as we've grown over the past 14 months or so. Oh, absolutely. It has become a sensation. And Rohan, let me come to you with this one. They say imitation is the best form of flattery. So when you look at Twitter spaces, what do you make of it? You know, we're just really, really excited about voice as a medium. And, um, you know, we, we think uh, we're just really, really focused on our own product and are just really, really enjoying building it right now. Um, I don't know, Paul, do you want to add something to this? Yeah, I think it's not too surprising to us that other people are getting into social audio. I, I mean, you, you mentioned one, but there are probably 10 other big <laughs> networks that we've heard of that are launching social audio products. And we think audio is a durable medium. Uh, we think text was, we think photos were, we think short form video was, and we think audio was. And so, um, so I think there's gonna be a lot more of that from many different companies all around the world. And we also think that there is something important about, about focus, about having a company that is solely focused on this one thing and only this one thing. And, and it's community and it's product and creating an experience fully focused on audio. And, and I think that if you look historically, you've seen a similar thing with other networks. There's sort of one network for text, there's one network for, for photos, there, there's one network for short form video, at least in each major region. And, and um, we just try and stay really laser focused on creating the best experience for the user community, fully focused on audio every day. And, and I think when you do that, um, things tend to move in the right direction. So, you know, we're, we're excited to see where we can take it. So as you stay razor focused on building this product and audio only social product at the moment, Rohan, do you think you'll ever flirt with video? Do you think you'll ever have video? Do you think you'll ever allow these rooms to be recorded? <laughs> You know, uh, never say never, but uh, audio uh, is the core of the Clubhouse experience today. And, and we're just really, really blown away by all the creative ways that people leverage um, audio, not just audio, but actually the visuals of the profile picture today. Um, and so um, uh, I think for the short term, we, we plan to be very, very focused on audio. It's just been a really, really uh, exciting experience uh, just seeing all this creativity emerge on the platform. Yes, we're seeing a lot of creativity. And with that, I want to ask both of you, what do you make of the way we're seeing Clubhouse being used in India? Now, I'm really honest with you. So before Clubhouse you know, came on Android, etc., a lot of us were hearing about these very different kind of rooms and very different kind of uh, uh, conversations that were happening. And then boom, it arrived in, on Android. And we were hearing stories about how there was um, Rohan, you know, Hanuman Chalisas in the morning. Um, Gurgaon, Noida, Tinder Nights. So I don't know if it's used like that separately. So I'd love to get both of you on this. Yeah, no, honestly, it's been so fantastic to see this growing community from India engage with each other, but not just with, with each other, but with the global clubhouse community. I was actually born in India. I grew up in Delhi. I did my schooling there. And as you know, like India is a very, very diverse and dynamic country. And I've always been astonished by the incredible creativity of Indians. And I'm just so excited that people around the world are going to discover that creativity on Clubhouse. Uh, you know, there's uh, at any given moment, there are a variety of rooms happening at any point, you know, from singing and music rooms to discussions around business and politics and sports and, and cinema. Um, you know, you mentioned the room around the Hanuman Chalisa. They wake up every morning and they recite that every single morning. And then there are all these other rooms where people just take turns singing and takshari with each other. And... Um, you know, it's, it's been phenomenal. Uh, there are these incredible creators, uh, Ashwarya Subramaniam, who's the former editor chief of Elle magazine in India. And, uh, um, you know, Ashwarya regularly hosts uh, rooms around fashion and culture, frequently reaching our 8,000 person limit. And then there's Anirudh Deshmukh, who runs a daily popular music <laughs> show uh, around, uh, you know, people taking turns and making music with each other. And uh, we've just been blown away by the creativity of uh, the Indian community and uh, are just so excited to continue improving the product for them. Yeah, the diversity and creativity, it is just mind blowing. I mean, the way that we think about it is that um, all of information technology, it's about reducing friction. And when you can give 
people a tool, they blow you away with the new use cases that they come up, uh, that they come up with for that tool. And, and, you know, we look at like what happened in video. For, for decades, you had broadcast television, where at least in the US, there were four channels and everyone watched the same thing at 7.30 on a Thursday night. And then in the 90s, we got cable. And that's when we suddenly had 24 hour news stations and, and home shopping networks and golf channels and things that had never really been possible before. And then we got YouTube around 2005 and wow, people just came up with all sorts of different formats, hundreds, thousands of different things that had never even been thought of before. And with audio, you can imagine a similar progression where for decades and decades we had broadcast or you know terrestrial radio where you've had a few dozen channels and then we got podcasting which in theory is unlimited but it's it's somewhat it is somewhat limited by by the format and it's hard to discover and it can't be live it can't be interactive so when we gave people clubhouse late you know early last year they just immediately started coming up with all sorts of different formats game shows and musicals and interactive news programs and they just constantly amaze you with their creativity. And it's just so exciting every day to see them come up with entirely new ways of bringing people together. And we, when, we, when we sort of fast forward two years, three years, five, 10 years in our minds, it, it just makes us so excited to think about where that can go, having seen a similar thing happen you know, with video 10, 15 years ago. So Rowan, you, know, you, you, were, you grew up in Delhi, move to Silicon Valley, all of that. You're a classic example of when many look up to that you can never dream too big. So when you, any advice that you have for the young Indian founders that are tuning in, you've created a product that you know is taken the world by storm. I think the only thing I'd say is uh, I've always been one of those people who really, really enjoyed building things. And uh, you know, the, the, the best thing about the internet is you can connect with people um, around the world and you can build things with them and I just say that anytime you have an idea just just build it you know it's it's a really really um, amazing time that we live in where you could just sit um, on your computer around the world and just build things and uh, even when I was growing up in India I used to build build all these websites uh, and uh, I used to get to talk to people around the globe and uh, nowadays you can build companies <laughs> and applications that can reach millions and billions of people uh, by doing so so um, yeah that would be my only advice I'd also say it's generous to say taking the world by storm. <laughs> okay. oh. Ro Rohan and I have been working on social products for 10 or 15 years, probably. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, you started, you start, you guys started this interview. You, you guys started this interview by saying it was not even you who contacted the world's second richest man, Elon Musk, Tesla, all of that. It was he contacted you guys. So I think I was being, I was, I was not being very generous at all. I would like to say I, that. It was, it but was I know the you user guys community to that, that contacted like to him. You know, I mean, we've it heard was, about it. it. It's really the creators on the platform. It's, it's never us, and and it's usually not the person coming on. It's usually the the hard work, the effort, the creativity uh, of all of the people who are hosting the you know the hundreds and thousands of rooms that happen every day across the network. We we get no credit. We built the container, and and the people fill it up. Great founder talk. Uh, you know, the other thing we read a lot about was, and I'd love to get your uh, comments on it. Um, is it true Twitter wanted to buy out Clubhouse, looking at a $4 billion buyout? Uh, we can't comment on uh, anything like that, but we do think that there's going to be a very big and important company that, that's built in this space. And we're working hard every day to, to try and build the right product for everyone. Uh, you know, before we end the interview and all of that, um, how are you going to make sure that Clubhouse, which it is right now, a safe social network? I'll let so any of you is, decide which one, one of you want to take that. Uh, this is something that we think about every day, all the time. I think moderation, trust, and safety is something that you just have to constantly prioritize if you're building any sort of social network. And we think about it in three different buckets. We think about the people that you have on board, the policies that you have in place and the product features that you build to deal with it because we're building a product for everyone and the reality is there are bad actors in the world and so you have to build a service that is durable to, to that sort of behavior hmm. so the first thing i talked about was people we need to make sure that our team is staffed with people who have experience building social social networks and, and dealing with with issues like that in the past but also 
the, the ability to think about how live group audio is different and how we can do better than past platforms have done. And, and we need to make sure we're staffed up to, to handle a wide range of different languages and, and, and different regions. Then on the policy side, we need to think about our external policies that we share with the world. And, and those are always going to be living documents that need to adjust based on new learnings and the internal playbooks that we develop to make sure that the team is consistently enforcing any sort of issues that come up. And finally, the, the product. We need to make sure that we've got external product features that allow the, the user community to quickly report any incidents that they see on the platform so that we can be helped by the efforts of this dedicated community of millions of people every day helping us keep an eye on things and also the internal tooling so we can process any complaints very quickly and efficiently. So there's no perfect answer for it. It's just something that you have to deeply care about and, and always prioritize and work to stay one step ahead of. Okay, good to hear that. Rohan, uh, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you for sure is, um, and you know, I, I'm sure a lot of viewers of my eyes would want to know, so it's best to ask both of you. Uh, so Rohan, tell me, how does one, what would your recommendation be for someone to increase their following? We keep hearing, oh yeah, if you link it with Instagram and Twitter, suddenly your numbers will explode. If you go in a room, a, that's another chatter. If you go in a room, suddenly people will start following you. And you do need to have that to start a room as well. So any hacks? <laughs> um, I don't know about if it's about the hacks, but I think what we always say is the best way to gain a following on Clubhouse is to is to talk in Clubhouse, is to always create interesting content, you know, to take the initiative to start rooms, to host regular shows, to regular programming, um, you know, share your ideas with the world and the best ideas always win out. And, uh, you know, that's what we've seen happen over and over again on different platforms, but we're seeing that happen on Clubhouse as well. The other thing I would add is that for most people, Clubhouse isn't actually about building a following. Um, there are some people that want to create broadcast shows and live interactive shows and, and, and make those for, for thousands or millions of people, and that's great. But I think for most people, Clubhouse is more about the small rooms and the community and, and about genuine human connection, and that's really our North Star. There's something so special about audio where, where you don't have – you don't have the video. You don't have to worry about what you look like or, or how messy your, your house might be. But you have all the fidelity and emotion and, and back and forth that voice gives you. And that allows people to connect in this really deeply authentic way. So they'll put their phone down and they'll, and they'll talk for hours and hours. And they'll close the app at the end of the session feeling better than they did when they opened it. Because they've deepened friendships and met new people and learned. And most of the people doing this... They don't actually really care about the following that they're building. They care about the relationships that they're forming. And, and that's that's really the North Star that we always try and go back to. Will you ever allow monetization by the creators? Is, is, that, is it too early to talk about it? Are you guys already thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, we've always wanted to build a business that is aligned with the interests of our creators. And I think direct creator monetization is really, really important to us. Uh, we recently rolled out uh, direct payments uh, for creators in the app in the US. And one of the things that we'd like to do is roll out tipping and tickets and subscriptions. You know, I think we need to explore a lot more here. Um, it, it just feels like it, it's the way that we would like to build our business long term. And Paul, how are you going to make a highly profitable uh, business? How, how, how are you going to monetize it? Well, to build on Rohan's point, we're really excited to create a, a different type of network, right? One that, that's based on genuine, authentic human connection that leaves you feeling better rather than worse. And, and we think part of that is to build a, a business model that's aligned with the business models of our creators. So we want to make sure that we're only growing as a business if they are growing a, as businesses. So we started off with direct payments, which um, we're really excited to roll out to, to more parts of the world, including India, as quickly as we possibly can. We're excited about things like in-room tipping and subscriptions and, and paid events. And um, I imagine that the way we'll end up uh, funding the business is to take a, a small cut of certain types of transactions like that. And, and in the process, create a service that, that it, you know, allows all of these incredible, smart, funny people who are bringing people together in, in all of these different ways to get paid directly by happy listeners who want to thank them for the experiences that they're creating for them. We think a model like that um, aligns ourselves uh, much better with, with the wishes and the needs mm. of our creator community and can be really sustainable in the long term. 
And and would the uh, the host be allowed to decide what the price should be for entering the room, Rohan? Like for example, you know, let's say you get Elon Musk back, and he he decides to have a room, or he decides to come and host a room, and and they and it's you know people have to pay. Does he will he decide the entry fee, or do you think it'll always be left open to those that use Clubhouse? You know, we haven't actually made a decision on that. I think um, uh, we always say creator first. So generally, we tend to gravitate towards this idea that the creator of the room, the per person bringing people together, the person hosting these amazing shows, and um, uh, you know, they should be the ones to be in control uh, of what they want to do. Maybe they want to host it for free, and that's totally fine. If they want to have a ticket, that's fine. If they only want to allow subscribers to join the show, that's fine. Mm. Or, or maybe they just say, it's free, but you can tip me if you really, really like the content. And so um, I think this aligns with our general mission, which is creator first. You have two minutes to go before you have a town hall in Germany. So very quickly, <laughs> if both of you could tell me very quickly, what is the craziest, the wackiest thing that you both have seen on Clubhouse? <laughs> <laughs> you go first, Paul. Um, there was a wedding the other day uh, which I think a lot of people really enjoyed. I didn't get to see that one. But um, I think that the, the, the moments that are, that are most interesting to me, like it's, it's exciting to see the celebrities, right? You have, you, have, uh, you know, professional athletes and, and Nobel Prize winners and heads of state and, 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 and famous actresses and, and all of these people that you've heard of in real life in the room with you. That's exciting. But, but to me, the moments that are the most powerful are where people are coming together because there's something important happening in the world and they just want to be with other people and they just want to talk about it or, or something happening in their personal lives, like tribute rooms to people who have passed away or, or, or moments where something incredible happens on the news and everyone jumps into clubhouse and, and they just talk about it. So the, the range is really the incredible thing. You know, the, the wedding was a crazy thing, but um, it's really those moments uh, where, where people just want to connect with other humans that are always the most exciting for us. Yeah, one really creative thing that I was uh, thinking that was special was uh, a few months ago, um, 40 people just met each other on Clubhouse and decided to host like an entire production of The Lion King, the musical. <laughs> and um, they did like the voices and the sound effects and then they changed their profile photos so the scene would change behind them. And it was just one of the most creative things I've ever seen. <laughs> And, uh, there are some incredible singing rooms in India, I would add. <laughs> yeah. Wow, so they had a musical on Clubhouse. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and this was in India? No, this one was in the US. <laughs> <laughs> OK, with that, I'd like to thank, oh, this was in the US. <laughs> And with that, I know you guys have a town hall in Germany. I, you had a hard stop. Thank you so much for agreeing to come and doing this interview on video too and not just audio. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. This was a lot of fun and, and uh, we're uh, really grateful for the chance to talk about it. Yeah, thank you so much.